You are listening to the Jewel City Podcast. You can join us in person Sundays at 10 a.m. or 6 p.m. We have something for all people and all ages. Or join our live stream at 10 a.m. In this podcast, we'll hear a message from Pastor Robert. Share with you my heart this morning. Uh, I feel like, you know, the last couple of days I've been in a dark and, and maybe like, I don't know how to describe it, like a, uh, a lonely place where I, I'm not used to being. And I, it, uh, to be honest with you, when I started preparing for this series, I didn't realize uh, how tough some of the messages would be. And uh, so I feel like I, I'm, I'm in a battle. And uh, uh, so I, I need your prayers this morning because I'm going to preach it like the Lord gave it to me. Um, so in saying that, um, when we came in, and, and honestly, I mean, I, I had Pastor Aaron came in, prayed with me because I just, uh, I'm, not, I'm not myself, you know. And, uh, but when I came in and I began to lift my hands and begin to sing, and I could feel my help coming and uh, said, the battle's not mine, we sang but the battle is the Lord's. So before I get into this message, I, I just feel like I need to laugh a little bit. So on a farm, every farm ought to have a cat. And uh, can I get an amen, Pastor Rita? Amen. I figured you'd have done a backflip right there. And uh, Pastor Rita was sharing with me the other day, you know, she loves her cat. How old's your cat? 17, 17 years old. So Pastor Rita's sitting in her chair and she's got her bowl in her hand and she's got her yo yogurt and her fruit and she's eating. Do you know animals know how to communicate? And that little cat come over and went, and Rita said, now honey, mommy's eating. I'll get yours in just a little bit. I'm telling it just like it was told to me. I'll get yours in just a little bit. Okay. Now honey, leave mommy alone. Mommy's eating, then mommy gets you. All right. So she put her bowl down and she went in the kitchen. She looked over on the floor and the little kitty's bowl wasn't there. And she thought, well, I know I washed it. So she went over to the sink and it wasn't there. And the cat's standing there. And she said, don't you worry, honey. Mommy gets you temporary bowl." Mommy gets temporary bowl, puts the food in, the kitty, you know, whatever kitties do. I don't know what kitties do. <laughs> so Rita goes back in the living room and sits down and picks up her bowl. She's eating out of the kitty's bowl. She looked at me when she told me that story. She said, well, I want you to know, I washed that bowl. <laughs> did you finish eating out of it? I did. You did? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah this, she told me after she got done eating, she went down the hall and used the litter box. <laughs> uh, thanks for sharing that because I left that part out. <laughs> Stand with me this morning. Amen. <laughs> Uh, wow, look around, church, look around. Uh, you know, normally I go in behind the stage at 9.45 and pray, but just to be honest, I was hiding in my office this morning and standing there looking out the window. It humbled me. It looked like an interstate coming in here. And we give God all the glory, amen. So this is the second, yes, let's do that. Let's leave out the little jingle if we had it. Uh, I want to get right into it. The title is A Sower Went Forth to Sow. It's the second week of our series. And I want to read from uh, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 13, verses 1 through 9. The same day went Jesus out of the house. Why don't you have Miss Mary ready to, to pray, would you please? The same day went Jesus out of the house and set by the seaside. 
And a great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Man, can you not visualize such a multitude of people? And the Lord's like, wow, I need a podium. And he sits down in a little boat and he shoves off the bank. And multitudes greater than this are standing there. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other, I just wonder if, if that's your name this morning, other. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit. Look at your life. You ought to be able to look into your life this morning and see if there is fruit. If there is no fruit in your life, your name is not other. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit. Some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. And then this really got a hold of me. Jesus said, who hath ears to hear? Let him hear. Go ahead, Mary. Father, we pause this morning, Lord, just to give you praise and just to give you worship this morning. We thank you, Lord, for your presence that's already here, for the Holy Spirit that showed up to do a definite work in this place this morning. We pray this morning, Father, first of all, for my pastor. I pray, God, for the unction of the Holy Spirit to move through him. As he scatters the seed this morning, I pray, God, that it will fall upon good soil, Lord. God, that we may leave this house, Lord, and produce the fruit, the fruit of the Spirit, Lord. God, that we may walk and talk as Jesus would walk and talk. I pray today, God, that you will bless this congregation. I pray, God, today that you will move, Holy Spirit, that you will do the work, convict hearts today. God, I pray, and Father, we ask you today if there's a soul or souls, God, that's here today that don't know Jesus that's right. Christ. That's right. Oh, God, the giver of life, I pray today that you will minister to them as only you can do. For Father, there is honey in the rock this mm -hmm. morning. And we give you praise and we give you glory. For we're believing you today, Father, for do a mighty work. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I knocked the water clear over. Honey in the rock. Boom, right there it is. Listen, this parable, don't worry about it, should encourage spiritual sowers. Who are spiritual? Spiritual sowers, those that preach, those that teach, and those that seek to lead others to the Lord. Can you give me a little bit more, please? Those that seek to lead others to the Lord. It's not only my responsibility to sow the seed. It's not only the teachers in the kids' cove and the adult class in every other class that we have to sow the seed, it's to every born again believer that carries the title Christian. It's your responsibility. It is a miracle of God's Holy Spirit as we use the word to lead others to him. And there is a harvest all around us. I was in Chick-fil-A yesterday. Can I tell you that I bankrupt you? chicken went through the roof and God opened up a door to talk to a man and a woman 
sitting there in a booth while I was waiting on the ladies' chicken for their ladies' gathering, which was incredible. And I thank you all, all the ladies that are supporting my wife and what you're doing there is life-changing for many people. Well, God opened up a door in a chicken house that you can share Jesus if you want to share Jesus. Verse nine said, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. If you honestly seek God's will in your life, you will have spiritual hearing. And these parables will give you new perspective. Bottom line, no sowing, no reaping. Bottom line, sowing is of utmost importance. And God pronounced a blessing on those that sow. In Isaiah 33 and 20, just the first part there, blessed are ye that sow beside all waters. Now, you know, I got to look in at different commentaries. I went and I, I, I spoke with uh, uh, Pastor Rita about it and, and uh, different translations said different things, but blessed are ye that sow beside all waters. It's places that I believe that are well moistened and, and, and prepared. And then it goes on to say that the send forth the feet of the ox and the ass and, and one uh, uh, translation said that they would have plenty to eat. Uh, so I, I just believe God is telling us by many waters, uh, by multitudes of people like Jesus was sitting in the sheep, uh, or excuse me, in the, in the ship and he's sitting there and he's sowing seed uh, and there's people everywhere. Everywhere I go, there's places that I can sow seed if I got my spiritual ears on and I'm sensitive to those needs of the people. It don't matter where I go. And honestly, not every day, but most days I say, God, place me somewhere that I can share Jesus. Listen to me in Haggai chapter two, verse 19. God questioned complacent Israel. And I don't want us to be complacent. And I think we have a great church, but we got a long way to go, baby. A long way way to go. He said in chapter two of Haggai, verse 19, is the seed yet in the barn? Seed left in the barn, never planted, never watered, living alone, never produces fruit, never. Jesus said in John 12 and 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. What a beautiful picture of the necessary sacrifice of our Jesus Christ. Unless a grain of wheat is buried, it will not become a blade of wheat producing more grain. It just won't happen. Do you hear me? Sow good seed. Sow good seed. Don't fall apart when something comes against you. Sow good seed. Keep both hands on the steering wheel when someone sign language you while you're driving. It's just a good way to sow good seed. And you drive by and your license plate says Jewel City Church. God gave every seed the power to reproduce itself. Think about that. And we got the seed to reproduce another Christian. Hallelujah. God gave us all the power to reproduce. The sower plants the seed, but I cannot make it grow. I can sow seed like I do and I cannot make it grow. The seed sprouts and it grows spontaneously and the power is not in me, the power is in the seed. The power is in the seed, that's why it's important to plant good seed and water it with prayer and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Now I believe that there is a drought that exists in America 
I believe there is a deficiency of spiritual food coming from pulpits in America that have been watered down just like I dropped that glass of water this morning. When I think about the church that I grew up in, the Methodist Conference was one of the strongest conference on planet Earth back in the day. Brother, it was hell, fire, and brimstone, and now she split right down the middle because there is a drought in America's pulpits where they're not preaching the Word of God. Somebody give God a hand clap and a shout of praise. The Bible declares that the entrance of God's incorruptible seed effects salvation. You start throwing corruptible seed from the pulpit and there'll be no salvation. First Peter 1 and 23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. By the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Believers are to love one another, bottom line, because they've been born again by the word of God, the incorruptible seed. Believers are not born again by the corruptible seed, not by the seed of mere man who is corruptible. And we're living in a day today where the corruptible seed is being sown and people are buying it. If we are born again by the work of some man, we are still corruptible. If you are still abusive, prideful, angry, selfish, jealousy, arrogant, bitter, hateful, friend, you need to be born again by the incorruptible word of God because he'll change your heart. And it's a process. Believers are born again by incorruptible seed, which is the word of God itself. The word of God will never change. I don't care what century you're in, what culture, the word of God will never change. The word incorruptible means that it does not perish. The word incorruptible means that it does not perish. That's what I've been changed by. Jesus said in John 15 and three, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. It is false assumption that the sensational can replace the word of God. This is absolutely beautiful, beautiful. All the equipment, our building, our music, but do not be deceived. Nothing takes place over God's word. God's word. Help me, Lord. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I feel like our church is growing. I don't mean in numbers. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse three and four. Paul said, for I delivered unto you first, somebody say first, of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. First, takes first place to preach Christ, his death, his burial, and his resurrection is of first importance. The command to preach the word, the command. And this is where I, I feel like I, I come in from here on out where it just started getting heavy on me. I've got a responsibility I stood and I watched people come in here. It was, it was just, it blows my mind. And, and then I see all the little kids uh, going down the hall. We've got a responsibility. I have, the teachers have, and every other believer that sits in these chairs, we've got a responsibility to preach the word of God, to sow the seed. Do you hear what I'm saying? Come on, don't patty cake. Give God a great hand clap.
the command. Paul said to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 through 4, he said, I charge thee. Where is our Paul's? Where is our Timothy's? Can you imagine telling Paul, you need to calm down, Paul? There are certain things you can't discuss, Paul. Can you imagine that? He said, I charge thee therefore before God, oh my, and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. He's, Paul said to Timothy, he said, preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. He said, Timothy, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come, listen to this. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. Those that have ears hear. What's, what's he teaching here? And they shall turn away their ears from the what? Truth. And shall be turned into fables. It was important for Timothy to preach the gospel so that the Christian faith could spread throughout the world. And it's important that I preach the gospel and that every other man and woman preach the gospel and teach the gospel and every other believer, don't water it down. Tell it like it is that the gospel can spread. Preaching the word of God is of most important responsibility, the most important responsibility the church and its members have been given. Many, many years ago, Cody was wee little and we took him to Dr. Moman. And Dr. Moman, he's, he's got an accent and I, 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 I have a hard time understanding just anybody. And he said, he got, he got a walk to this. I said, what did he say? He said, got, got, got walks, walks in his ears. I said, he got rocks in his ears. <laughs> oh, he said he had wax in his ears. Wax in his ears. What's keeping you from hearing the word of God? Paul declared that the true minister not be guilty of handling the word of God deceitfully. Said so he turned from there and looked for a teacher that would tickle their ears, would tell them what they want to hear. Can I tell you where I'm headed this morning? It'd been a lot easier for me just to stay over in my office or come over here today and preach something about the joy unspeakable and full of glory. But I stand accountable to God Almighty and everything that God, that, that God instructs me to preach, I will answer to him, him, not you, to him. Be prepared, courageous, sensitive. That's what Paul is telling Timothy, to God given opportunities to tell the good news. Paul told Timothy, hey, you've got to cut it straight. You've got to preach it straight. Paul declared the true minister not to be guilty of handling God's word in a haphazard way. 2 Corinthians 4 and 2, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Some translation says rightly dividing means literally cutting straight. Cutting straight, as Rusty would say, gum barrel straight. Preachers, teachers, and anyone else who talks about Jesus Christ, you better remember that you're standing in the presence of God. And God hears everything that you're saying. God hears every word. When you tell people about Jesus Christ, be careful not to distort the message to please your audience. Be careful. So here's why I'm so heavy. I've got to preach the truth. And I believe incorruptible seed is the message 
in America that the LGBTQ is acceptable to God. And I know many people would rather me talk about something else. But I've been given this platform to speak the truth. And if you don't notice, I try to hug all your children when they're leaving here. And the kids come running to me. Because them kids mean something to me. And we're living in a time they won't even leave Scooby-Doo alone. I read it yesterday. Won't even leave Scooby-Doo. I'm not going to back down even though it's been heavy, even though I've cried, even though I don't want to get up and talk about it. Because you know why? People don't want to hear the truth. I got a tremendous amount of respect for Tony Dungy, one of the greatest African-American football players of all times and coaches and speakers and motivational speakers and a Christian man. And they're trying to destroy him because he went to a walk for pro-life in Washington, D.C. They want his job off the NFL network. Can I tell you, hey, it is time. If a Tony Dungy can put everything on the line, I can stand in Meadowbrook, West Virginia and proclaim that God's word is God's word and God's word is the truth. And I want to tell you something else. I laid before the Lord this morning early and I said, I'm not here today for man's applause. So I hope that applause was for the Lord. But I care about your children enough to stand in front of you and live stream and TV and discuss a topic that nobody wants us to speak up about. So I would pray that you got the gumption and the spirit of God to sit down with your own children and show them the word of God. I wrote a, book with the help of many. And I asked Pastor Aaron to put it out on the black tables back there. Pick it up and read it. Sit down and let your children hear that you need to remember something. Proclaim the truth of God's word, just the truth. You say, well, Pastor, what do I do when it's in my family? You love your family. You love your son. You love your daughter. You never shut your door, but you let them know what God says and where you stand and you still love them and then brother, they will be accountable for what they do and not what you do. But if you go along with it and you approve it, you're just as guilty as they are. Oh boy, oh boy. Listen, all scripture is profitable. We wanna live by just what we like. 2 Timothy 3 and 16, all scripture, all, somebody say all, All. is given by inspiration of God. Everything I have in this book is scripture, the word of God, given by God. You wanna know what everyone else's opinion is or do you wanna know what God's opinion is? I'll take God's opinion, thank you. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good work. The Bible says, the Bible says, I didn't say it, profitable for doctrine. That's principles and rules for life. God's got principles and rules for life that are profitable unto us all. The Bible says, profitable for reproof. God wants man to have a sense of conviction. You'll never have a sense of conviction without the Spirit of God and the Word of God. The Bible's profitable for correction. God wants man to be set aright when he's wrong. Parents don't want to correct their children. I'm at the gym working out. I know it's hard to believe. I don't need to. And I'm in the pool. And the pool's half the size of this room. Two little boys, two, in the pool. We got plenty of room. Where do they want to play? Right where I'm at. 
Mom's sitting there watching. Hey, don't you can come over here. Now, I'm not going to tell you again. I'm not going to tell you again. I ain't going to tell you again. I ain't going to tell you again. I ain't going to tell you again. Then about, to, I wanted to tell him. <laughs> and, and, and then honestly, I'm not exaggerating, about 20 minutes later, listen, you got five more minutes to swim and we're leaving. I'm like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> five minutes goes by. Hey, hey, come on, let's go. I don't want to go. You got five more minutes. <laughs> On the third time, I wanted to scream. I had flashbacks. My mom would have said, hey, let's go. And if you said, no, my mom might have came in the pool. I never seen her in the pool, but she might have came in the pool. 10 year olds, 11 year olds, telling you where they're going to go. I don't want to go to church. I have people tell me all the time, well, we would come, but you know, my, my son don't want to come. How old's your son? 12. 12. If I'm talking to you this morning, my mom and dad would have jerked my hind end out of bed. You know why? Because they were a good mom and dad. Discipline. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he needs to move on. You know why? Because you know I'm right. Last, the Bible is profitable for instruction in righteousness. God wants man to know the right things to do and the right things to say in life. And it'll come by the word of God. How hungry are you? Every word of scripture is God breathed. It's profitable. Jesus said in Matthew 4 and 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. God's word is a spiritual sword ready for battle. And I've got the responsibility, and I don't take it lightly, to declare the whole counsel of God. I said the whole counsel of God. I'm gonna talk about abortion. I'm gonna talk about adultery. I'm gonna talk about fornication. I'm going to talk about bitterness and anger. I'm going to talk about unforgiveness and hatred. And I don't hate nobody. So if they want to come cancel me, you can't cancel what God started. Do you hear me? You can't cancel what God started. <laughs> Acts 20 and 27 For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. I cannot shun away from any portion of God's word and I'm not going to. And I'll tell you why, because it's the truth that sanctifies you. Jesus said in John 17 and 19, and for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. We are to be sanctified through God's truth and God's truth is God's word. Jesus had come into the world to bring men back to God through reconciliation, through his word, through the truth. And that's why his word is here today. Is it so, Anthony, you and I can be brought back into reconciliation, reconciled with God Almighty. Stand with me. Everyone, no, no music. Just stay, stay with your families. You need to hear something that I'm gonna say. Spiritual responsibility is a serious matter. Your children are watching you. It is through the word of truth that sanctification comes. And I'm believing, I honestly am, I'm believing in a great harvest, a great harvest. But it will only happen when God's people see and seek the need and when they ask God. I didn't say that. Matthew 9, 38, ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore to send out workers into the harvest field. The harvest has to be reaped at the ripe time, ripe, 
didn't say right, ripe. When the harvest is in the field and it's not reaped, that harvest will rot. That harvest will die. And every life has got to be harvested when it's ripe. Because if not, it'll rot and it'll die and it'll split hell wide open. Every life has a season. James says, what is your life? It's but a vapor, it appears, and then it vanishes away. Who in your family do you know right now? What coworker, what neighbor do you know right now is not ready to meet the Lord? Wonder what would happen if you went home today and the closest person to you that didn't know the Lord, you get a phone call from someone and their life was taken in an accident. Shame on us. You can't save them, but you can sow the seed. It's not his will that any should perish. None, none. If we do not sow, there'll not be a harvest. And some of your family, some of mine, people I know, will die and never have eternal life with God. I, you know what I find? I find that to be pretty serious. Pretty serious. Every head up and every eye open. If you're here today and you're not right with God, I'm not gonna come to you, but slip your hand up high. Say right here, right now, I wanna give my life to Christ. Is there one? I'll see your hand, sir. I like that. I like that. Somebody else? Somebody else? Am I missing anybody else? Somebody else. You know, if I ask you to put your head down, probably 10 people raise their hand. Can you believe that? Well, I ain't going to today. Yes, I am. <laughs> Listen, I love you, but the Lord loves you more. Nothing to be ashamed of. So every head up and every eye open, anybody else, raise your hand. I'm not disappointed in one. Sir, you made the best decision in your life today. I don't know who that is that's with you today, but would you reach over and take her by the hand? Right there, take her by the hand. That's right. You, you just made a public confession. I want you to pray this prayer with me, sir. I want to tell you something. It's been 38, 39 years ago. I prayed that prayer that you're about to pray. And it's not always been easy, but the Lord has been faithful. Pray this and mean it from the bottom of your heart. Lord Jesus, today, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. From this day forward, I will do my best to live my life for you and by your word. In Jesus' name I pray and amen. Give God a great hand clap of praise. Come on, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Bless the Lord. Give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. I'm sure we somebody come up this piano. <laughs> every head up and every eye open. Everybody looking around. Who needs help sowing seed? Who needs help? Who needs help? Who needs help? Who needs help? Lord, help us. Lord, Give us that sensitivity to when you open up the door, Lord Jesus. Give us the boldness. Give us the courage. Give us the courage.
Thank you for listening to the Jewel City Podcast. You can join us in person Sundays at 10 a.m. or 6 p.m. We have something for all people and all ages. Or join our live stream at 10 a.m.